Famous for hits like The Sound of Silence, Mrs. Robinson, and Bridge Over Troubled Water, Simon and Garfunkel are the world's most famous folk rock duo. And today we're going to be taking a quick look at their career and history of releases. Young music hunt. Paul Simon was born October 13, 1941, and just a few weeks later, Art Garfunkel was born on November 5th. The two spent several years living just a few blocks away from each other, and while performing in their 6th grade school play, they started to get to know each other better. They became good friends, and when they started to take music more seriously, they dubbed themselves Tom and Jerry. In 1957, when the two were just 16 years old, they had their first successful Top 50 hit with the Everly Brothers-inspired Hey Schoolgirl. After that, they recorded a couple more singles, but they didn't do quite as well, and Paul Simon ended up recording a single by himself under the name True Taylor. This upset Art, and the two of them didn't work together again until 1963. They came to the attention of Columbia Records producer Tom Wilson and recorded their first album under the name Simon and Garfunkel, Wednesday Morning 3 a.m., which was released October 19, 1964. The album contains folk classics rearranged by Simon as well as several of his own compositions. This soothing, melodic, poetic album largely consists of two acoustic guitars and double bass, backing the distinctive sound of Art and Paul singing almost every word in unison and glorious harmony. Unfortunately, the album didn't gain an audience and the two broke up again. So Paul Simon bounced back and forth to London where he pursued a solo singing career and he recorded a stripped down, one microphone, one man album called the Paul Simon Songbook which was released in August of 1965. Earlier in 65, the Birds and Bob Dylan were having great successes with their new folk rock sounds and at the same time, The Sound of Silence was starting to pick up a little bit more radio play. So Tom Wilson decided to cash in on both of these happenings, and without informing Simon and Garfunkel, he hired session musicians to come and play electric guitar and rhythm tracks onto their old track. He released the single in September of 1965, and by January of 66, it hit number one on Billboard charts. To ride the wave of this newfound success, Paul Simon returned to New York City and regrouped with Art Garfunkel, where they quickly decided to record their second album, Sounds of Silence. They were able to release the album as quickly as January 17, 1966, and it featured the electric version of The Sound of Silence and the standout track I Am A Rock, which would enter the top 10 after being released as a single itself. After the rush job of Sounds of Silence, Paul Simon took full control of the recording process for their next album, Parsi Sage, Rosemary and Time, which he spent several months recording and tried to really perfect nail this one. It's been seen as their first true masterpiece, and though there are lyrics about changes in the world that spoke clearly to the audiences of 1966, it is a timeless album and one that will continue to be cherished for generations to come. The album contains the standout tracks Scarborough Fair, Homeward Bound, and the 59th Street Bridge Song, or Feeling Groovy. In 1967, Simon and Garfunkel toured all around the U.S. and Canada, as well as played a handful of shows in England. But, they weren't really recording any new songs at this time. This was when director Mike Nichols approached the band about adding new music to his upcoming film, The Graduate. At first, Paul Simon was opposed to the idea and saw it as selling out. But once he got to really meet with Mike Nichols and read the script, he was kind of keen on the idea. Though Paul wrote a few new tracks for it, only Mrs. Robinson was chosen as well as a bunch of older Simon and Garfunkel songs that appear in the film. What would become their fourth album, Bookends, was recorded sporadically between late 66 and early 68 and eventually released in April of 1968. It is a concept album that reflects a life cycle, starting with the Bookends theme and a song about diverging morals of the youth in the 60s then continuing with songs about different choices and perspectives at different stages in life. This album is a much bigger production than anything else we had previously heard from Simon and Garfunkel. Many different types of instruments come and go, and there are moments of really interesting psychedelia. The most known songs on this album are Mrs. Robinson, America, and Fakin' It. With the help of the publicity of The Graduate, this album stayed number one for seven weeks. Around this time, Art Garfunkel was getting more interested in acting, and Mike Nichols made a part for both him and Paul Simon in his upcoming film, Catch-22. Unfortunately, at some point, a screenwriter decided to scrap Simon's role, 
and Art went to Mexico to film the movie alone without Paul. Production for the film went on longer than expected, and this put a delay on Simon and Garfunkel's process, and that led to more strain between the two. Once the duo was together again, they quickly got back in the studio, and they had to refuse big gigs such as Woodstock because they were so focused on completing the album so that Paul could quit and go off on his own. Released on January 26, 1970, Bridge Over Troubled Water continued to see Simon and Garfunkel incorporate even more new sounds and styles into their unique breed of folk rock, including our first hint of Paul Simon's foray into world music, with his rendition of the track El Condor Pasa, a classic Peruvian song that he added lyrics to. One could argue that every Simon and Garfunkel album is better than the one before it, but what you can't argue with is the success of this album, as it hit number one on charts worldwide, staying there for up to 33 weeks. Though the two never officially got back together again, there have been little moments where they were seen together, like of course the infamous concert at Central Park, where there was supposed to only be a capacity of 48,500 people, yet 500,000 people showed up. Art Garfunkel would go on to be in Mike Nichols' next movie as well, and up to this point in time, he has released 10 studio albums. Paul Simon is one of my favorite solo acts of all time, so you can bet there's going to be a video about his discography, so stay tuned for that. Of course, I always prefer to grab a full album when I'm getting into a band, but I couldn't fault you for just turning on one song by these guys to give it a listen, turning on the greatest hits, or maybe YouTubing up these uh, live videos of them at Central Park. There is no wrong place to get started with Simon and Garfunkel. Just don't turn on voices of old people as your very, very first listening experience. Thank you so much for watching. I intend to share information about lesser known bands all throughout history and all around the world, so please subscribe so you don't miss on some crazy information. If you like this video, please let me know by smashing the like button and comment down below about your favorite Simon and Garfunkel album or maybe your favorite folk artist. Let's create some discussions about some wonderful music in the comments. And until next time, happy listening session.